Hello everyone, in this message you're about to listen to, Apostle Joshua Selman talks about how to avoid laziness as a believer. Now we've all had situations where we were lazy in our lives and at some point we're not ready to do anything. This message is here to help us to avoid laziness and make the most of the time. Be blessed as you listen. Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest period what don't you understand about this scripture is as clear as it is let me read it one more time those too lazy to plow in the right season so seasons matter will have no food at the harvest are we together there are many believers who are lazy there are many believers spiritually lazy, intellectually lazy, and all forms of laziness. They combine it in their lives and wonder why they are not going forward. In the name of Jesus tonight, I come by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cast out of your life every spirit of laziness. I cast out of your life every spirit of laziness. As a man of God, when you are lazy, be sure that, be ready for empty pews. God will honor you to the degree, not just of his mercy and faithfulness, but the degree of your own diligence too. Your own diligence too. Your own diligence too. Apostle, I want to be very wealthy. You think wealthy people just cross their legs and sleep? Run away from that lie you see on the internet. They are diligent people who work day and night. Day and night day and night as others are snoring they are awake even the keeper of israel does not sleep or slumber no wonder he's the king of kings satan who goes about like a roaring lion huh you you see both satan and 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 jesus they all agree that laziness is not good so which side are you if you are lazy because whether it's satan you want to serve or jesus you want to serve none of them will accept laziness I want to join your cult. You will still need hard work. I want to be part of Jesus' camp. I will, you will still... Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree on. That you will be a defeated person with it. Laziness. The time to wake up and read, you wake up and read. The time to wake up and pray, you wake up and pray. The time to put your life in order, you put your life in order. Laziness. Are we together? One enemy of laziness or one enhancer to laziness is called procrastination. One day I will do it. One day it go better. Don't worry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm planning about it. One day, one day. May that day be today for someone. One day I'll be serious with God. Let that day be today. One day I'll be serious with my destiny. Let that day be today. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can make that one day your today. Where you insist that from this day things must change in my life from this day wrong relationships be on your way from this day prayerlessness be on your way from this day laxity spiritually be on your way diligence is a powerful principle let's hurry up i'll give you two more and then we're done who is ready for number four the fourth character trait directly connected to victorious living is called the practice of forgiveness Colossians 3 13 forgiveness apostle don't talk about this one then you will go to hell because the Bible I don't mean an insult you literally will go to hell because the Bible says if you do not forgive men their sins neither with your own father forgive you your own sins there are people this over my dead body mentality I pray that it will die tonight it's painful but shout amen, amen. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13 the practice of forgiveness forbearing one another and forgiving one another i've taught you here that they mean two different things remember the word forbear means tolerate tolerate means accommodate that weakness because it will happen again and again and again for instance a noisy person does not need forgiveness if you tell a noisy person keep quiet you don't say i forgive you you say i tolerate you because in five minutes you will resume what the person needs is not forgiveness what the person needs is Forgiving one another, 
if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave you so also do ye. do you know this thing called offense and unforgiveness is a terrible cancer it stops the anointing from flowing it stops victory from manifesting are we together I'm not a medical doctor and this is not a medical advice but I know that offense can multiply you and make you age you can be 30 years and people would think you lied with your age they will say your true age is 50 because offense would have added 20 years to your face yes sir there are people like that how old are you 25 no you have to be you can't be 25 years are you my father are you my mother this is my age say no because you wrinkle your face you frown your face good morning what is good about the morning you see people behave like that okay happy sunday what is good about the sunday joy the antidote to offense joy let it flow like a river that all this bad this list of people you have in your there's what they used to call black book remember that black book talk you have a list of people you write over my dead body over my dead body and before you sleep you say god have mercy on me let me wake up in peace forgive me all my sins and then god forgives you and you wake up and continue your black your, your black list it's amazing the things that believers do we go and beg god oh say forgive me and then you now turn and you are doing your own again someone shout i forgive, I forgive. don't tell me who you are forgiving just say i forgive sometimes it can be yourself did you hear what i said sometimes it can be yourself for the many years of foolishness rejecting god when the gospel came i forgive the many years of prayerlessness that empowered causes to work against your life and delay your progress i forgive i forgive i forgive nobody lives an excelling life if you are not prepared to practice forgiveness forgiveness is predicated upon the humanity of men that the best of all men is human your spouse human are we together now pastor human members human business person human and that eventually one day at one point or the other knowingly or knowingly intentionally or otherwise the humanity of men will find expression and it may be at that moment a disadvantage to you maybe in anger maybe whatever it is so you make up your mind do you know that forgiving is one of the highest way to give we talk about giving and we limit it to money forgiveness is a kind of giving it's a giving that factors in the fact that people can fall short of your standard and you already prepare your heart forgiveness is a kind of giving don't say you are a giver to mean you drop naira and dollars alone you are not an authentic giver because the greatest giver did not just give things he gave his life and he did that forgiving us so if we are to model giving from Jesus, your giving cannot be limited to money alone or things alone or impartation alone. You must grant pardon to people, sometimes undeserving people. But let me put a balance very quickly and I've taught you here that the value of forgiveness is when it comes after repentance. Write that down so that you don't allow the devil confuse you through this charge. Without repentance, forgiveness will be useless. Let me say that again without repentance forgiveness will be useless the real value of forgiveness is when there is repentance a change of heart hallelujah is someone learning the real value of forgiveness is when there is repentance the prodigal son's father forgave him because the gentleman was willing to repent and he got up and began to take actions to honor his repentance how about people who perpetually remain unrepentant there is what the bible says to do with them i will tell you romans i believe 16 it says to mark and avoid give it to us please 
Romans chapter 16. Uh, I'm trying to look for the scripture now. Help me, Holy Spirit. That should be 16, 17, 18. Please give it to us. Beautiful. Romans chapter 16. The Bible recommends for people who are perpetually unrepentant. It says to mark them and to avoid them. Mark them and to avoid them. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And it says to do what? Avoid them. Verse 18. Does it have anything to teach us? Yeah. For they are that, they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches. Now this is where NIV helps us. Give us NIV. Please give us NIV media. For such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetite. It says by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. There are people like that. Forgiveness is wonderful, but don't keep destroyers in your space because Joshua Selman says forgive. There is wisdom that guides forgiveness. When people constitute a nuisance to your progress, mark them and avoid them. This is what the Bible teaches. Mark them and avoid them because it is only when you are alive that you can forgive. There are times that the cancer that is around you may not even leave you to be alive. Are we together now? The value of forgiveness is when there is repentance. When there is repentance. When there is repentance. But when there is perpetual unrepentance, the recommendation from scripture is to mark. To mark means to take note as touching the consistency of this evil behavior. And it says to avoid. You avoid for your own good. Who is learning? Mark and avoid. Let me give you the final trait. Are you ready for number five? So number one is gratitude. Number two is honor. Number three is diligence. Four is forgiveness. Number five, humility. Humility. You want to succeed? Pride is another cancer. James 4, 6. Humility. God resisted the proud. God resisted the proud. God resisted the proud. You know what that means? The anointing cannot fight for you when God is resisting you. Because the anointing only resists what is antichrist. So when God is resisting you, no amount of prayer except the prayer of mercy can bail you out. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. The proud man of God, the proud businessman, the proud academician. Are we together? The proud spouse, the proud child. God resisted the proud anyone, but he giveth grace to the humble. The humble man of God will find more grace. The humble businessman will find more grace. The humble politician will find more grace. The humble technocrat will find more grace. I can tell you, one thing that secures disfavor for you with both God and men is pride. Fight pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Fight pride. Fight it with all you've got. Let's read together Koinonia. One loud concert. Ready? One to go. Pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. One more time, please. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit. That means pride is prophetic. Every time you see pride around you, it is prophesying to you. That you are not going to last there something is about to come that will be tragic and will happen to you do you know i submit to you one of my major prayer points i don't think i'll ever remove that prayer point from my list is this prayer of humility as you rise in life and in ministry and as god continues to show you mercy you will see that this prayer of humility is a matured believer's prayer are we together go back and pray as god keeps lifting you men can clap you to your grave you can even from the abundance of the results that happen in your life you can indoctrinate yourself and exalt yourself more highly than is meet but let me encourage someone maybe this is the one trait you are missing 
you are not wanting in the area of diligence maybe you are not even wanting in the area of um, for unforgiveness but this pride is something you met everyone around your life was arrogant your mentors arrogant mentees arrogant you yourself arrogant you can change you can change you can change many men of god have been destroyed as a result of pride than demonic attack many businessmen have been destroyed because of pride than any demonic attack i can tell you firsthand by the integrity of scripture and by experience that pride is a killer i have seen many people in my life who were haughty today they are nowhere to write to write home about they faded like a leaf in ministry in business there were merchants, champions, millionaires, billionaires who decided to act in pride and today they've been reduced to ashes. I refer you to my teaching, the lifting power of true humility. There is false humility, but there is true humility. True humility is not the refusal to acknowledge the good that God has done in your life. True humility is acknowledging that without God and outside of God, you are nothing you are nothing ah you are nothing i'm preaching to myself as i'm standing here you are nothing oh, without god ebenezer it is god that lifts men never get carried away by any kind of lifting god brings in your life ministerial exploits are we together finances some you know money has started coming in some something significant and you know sometimes people who need you will praise you in such a way that you become deaf to the voice of God you will not know when you have gone out of the zone of humility every time pride comes and you don't deal with it if God loves you I'm telling you how he deals with you he will allow a system to touch you that will remind you if you are discerning you will know that it's not the devil fighting me you will go back quickly for a retreat and say God before I embarrass myself what have I done wrong and God will say you started taking my place and this embarrassment is a sign of my mercy to bring you back before the devil strikes you and makes you a casualty for someone you came to this church tonight full of yourself full of your abilities full of your accolades business exploits I congratulate you for that but in the presence of pride you will not go far you will not go far when people lift their crowns and clap sometimes I'm tempted to intercede for them and say God show mercy and you see this pride sometimes comes because of our backgrounds we come from families it's it's um, it's it's there is a psychology to pride when you come from a background of deprivation where you never have the opportunity to experience life at a certain level if you now break through that barrier there is the tendency to want to to have a revenge mission i need to show people i'm now richer i need to show people i'm now more anointed someone bow your head in one minute and cry and say lord this cancer of pride take it away from my life go ahead and pray someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart show me mercy king of kings and lord of lords take away pride ministerial pride business pride take it away from my life the pride of life arrogance in any expression take it away let it not be that when I build houses, I say my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. Someone pray, even if you're a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, a prodigal father, a prodigal businessman, a prodigal man of God, you can start from that point. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Shalege perendo soda balaka para katos yata. Go ahead and pray. Take a minute to pray. I repent from pride. I repent from pride. A life of 
boasting and pride i repent from it if i'm i'm lifted is because of your mercy if i'm anointed is because of your mercy someone pray if i'm helped by god is because of your mercy if i have anything that is worth clapping for is because of your mercy koinonia a product of your mercy intellect a product of your mercy help a product of your mercy go ahead pray zaria pray those connecting online pray i repent from pride i repent from vainglory except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep you came for a miracle service god is taking away from you like a, a surgery happening to your life these are the cancers the viruses that are stopping you from making progress Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Jia do wata Banda wani se kai Me rahama Gawa ye Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let the merciful one visit you tonight. Show you mercy. ordinary results you see in the life of ordinary men these are the forces that are at work I can easily pray for you it does not take so much to cast out demons it is not even the ability of the man of God it does not take so much to minister healing but these are the weightier matters keeping your destiny down it's not enough to heal you the, the what is depressing you that even needs you being healed from depression is what I'm solving hallelujah many believers are not sick many believers are not necessarily oppressed but there are people who come in and out of church and shout amen and fall down and rise up and they don't move forward the Lord placed it upon my heart tonight I came in the spirit of a surgeon and what what God is doing to many people is taking you to the theater and opening you up removing some things and fixing other things that by the time you are out of this spiritual anesthesia, you will find out that the pain is no longer gone. That the pain is no longer there. You are, you are completely recovered. You are, you are healed. You will find out that the backwardness was as a result of a mindset. And that there are certain traits. Laziness. Destroyed many. Dishonor. Destroyed many. Pride. Destroyed many. Unforgiveness destroyed many okay strings is not here okay David Dam or anybody I want to sing this Rahama song for me if there's no guitar anybody Sam just sing it for me it's one of his songs I just sense that there's an anointing you sing it for me one time Someone, this 
is why you came to learn. Crying for mercy. for as long as I have your ears to hear it and for as long as I'm alive to say it this is one of my covenants with God that if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you this is what God told me many years ago if you will let men see me if you learn how to hide behind the cross and allow men see me you have a choice. You can direct them to yourself and be the superstar and be the celebrity and be the center of attraction. But the consequences that follow such a choice, you must be willing to go with it. But if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I'm about to pray for you. If we stop here tonight, this was a great miracle service. You may not understand the surgery. You are going to list these five things. I'm the one who will give you the prayer request. I, whether you want to lie down, whether you want to cry, for the next two or three minutes, I'm going to be listing these five traits. Where you have any of them missing in your life, please swallow your pride. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.